five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hello and welcome to Truth Beer and Pod Sequences. This is the show where we listen to all of the Cincinnati Craft Beer podcasts from the previous week. We get together and we review the shows with our own version of the truth. And uh, hopefully there's not too many consequences from the hosts of the other shows when we do that. Uh, I am Marco. I'm a brewer and I'm joined by my fantastic co-host. I am Julia and I write funny things about beer for the best season in the entire year beer event season. That's coming right up. It is. It'll actually be a couple days into beer event by the time this episode is released. Excellent. Also, beginning, I want to let everybody know that uh, they should come down to BC's Montgomery and uh, get some of the tasty beers that they have on draft or grab something out of the cooler. Shout out to BC's Montgomery, our podcast hosts. The best, freshest smelling bottle shop in town. That's right. It sure is. So we wouldn't be a, a good beer podcast if we didn't have beers. It's and true. Um, Julia, Marco, what, what are you drinking? What am I drinking? I am drinking to ro- to roll into the beer event season properly. Uh, Great Lakes Christmas Ale. Nice. It is delicious. Very nice. I had one uh, this past Friday. Excellent. Which was Black Friday. Ooh, the the day that retailers both love and hate all in the same breath tell me about it (laughs) okay so black friday for retail oh you weren't serious my bad (laughs) (laughs) well since you asked (laughs) i am drinking voss from sonder so voss is an amazing beer that is an excellent choice well thank you so marco have you listened to to any podcast this week i did i was very very busy uh doing you know full-time job retailers things Mm -hmm. Uh, but i did manage to catch up with all all of the Cincinnati Craft Beer podcasts from last week. It's true. And there were a grand total of two of them again. <laughs> Thank uh, goodness. Though we have heard, we talked to Matt Damaris a little bit uh, during the Weekly Pint last night, mm-hmm. the Outcast podcast, uh, Mark Miller. They were recording an episode while uh, chatting with chatting and drinking with the gnome on the Weekly Pint. So we have a new episode of that to look forward to, hopefully uh, soon, hopefully in, in the next week or two to add to our repertoire. And Cincy Brewcast should be back uh, next week as well. Yeah, and I, I'd imagine as, as we go through holiday season that it's going to be a little bit spotty. I don't think we're going to end up having a full wave or a full docket of Cincinnati craft beer podcasts every week. And Mm -hmm. good Lord, if that ever happened, Oh my God, how busy we would be. We might have to really release like two episodes during the week, like cut the time in half because we talk enough just on two podcasts. Right. We do not need to do an entire one though. I will say diamond, we are begging for another episode of beer is not for boys. So if, uh, if you and Chaz are, are thinking about, hey, maybe we could record something. Just throw your thoughts down uh, into the podcast app. We'd love to hear them. Love to hear it. So, so ooh. <laughs> jinx. Reading uh, re- each other's minds here, Julia. I'm telling you. So what were the podcasts that you listened to that you'd like to go over? Well, all of them. Okay. All of all of the well, Cincinnati Craft Beer podcasts. Well, well, so what are all of the podcasts? The, our listeners don't see our laminated s- sheets and our, our laminated notebooks show notes. sheets. Yes. And then we listed them all in our production meeting prior to hitting the record button. Uh, so Saunders Stories and Ship Beers. Two We're, very good podcasts. We should start with uh, Saunders Stories. Okay, let's do it. This was Chapter 81. This is Part 3 of their third anniversary show. Uh, I believe episode, or I'm sorry, not episode, but Part 4, which is the final anniversary episode, was just released this afternoon. So we'll be covering that next week. So the anniversary podcast Finally. Yes, the, the four-part uh, trilogy of the Sonder stories. That's right. Four-part trilogy. Four-part trilogy, yeah. 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 Should have just let that one sit there. Should have. Sorry about that. That's all right. It's all good. As they have with the previous two anniversary shows, this was broken up into two different groups of people. The first group that they had on was Austin, JP, and Tim, followed by Luke, Helena, and Wayne. Austin, JP, and Tim had some, some pretty pretty pro moves for beer events that uh that they talked about well they're not they're not strangers to beer events right i mean so austin's been brewing for a long time i mean i know austin from the the place that i don't work at he 
he helped uh, train me on the system at the place that I'm going to work at. Uh, so he's no stranger. Mm -hmm. uh, JP, also in, from the brewing industry, uh, not a stranger to beer events. Okay, so there's a situation that comes up in the second, mm -hmm. yes, in the this comes second up twice. part. Yes, this comes up. That's crazy how this one thing comes up twice, and the groups are, are completely separate. It's not as if you know they can hear what's going on with mm -hmm. one show versus the other because mm -hmm. you know in the Saunders stories uh, anniversary podcast uh, trilogy, which is four parts, they discuss ahead of time the drinking game that just Justin and Danny are playing. Correct. So. So because of that, they want to make sure the groups stay separate and they don't they don't mingle or, mm -hmm. or you know mix content information. Right, right. So it wasn't as if Luke Wayne and Helena were listening in when Austin JP and Tim were were talking, but Tim mentioned that an absolute power move for when you're going to a beer event is take a nap in between the sessions. Yeah, and very. I mean, disclaimer: they they don't mean in the middle of the floor. <laughs> No. At the session. Possibly in your car in the parking lot. Con that, at that, the at the event. Though. That may or that may, may not or come may up. not come up later on in uh, in this episode of Sonder Stories. But I thought that was absolutely phenomenal. I love beer. I love taking naps. Why not smash the two together? Drink beer, nap, drink beer. And I have mean, just a really fantastic day. A absolutely. full day yeah. of things that you love to do. And just think about this. After your first round of drinking you eat like a lot of food before you take your nap. Mm -hmm. That way you are conked out. You wake up, go to the bathroom, get more beer, and it's party time. Yep. Party all day. I loved it. They also, speaking of party time, pizza. Pizza was a big point of discussion on, on this, uh, this first section of this episode's show. Yeah, so there's a lot of things. So there's structure to each part of these episodes you know because you've followed along you listen yeah. to the sonder stories or you caught us talking about it there's a structure they have they have questions that are discussed prior to the episode right but there's always a turn or two that gets taken yes and one of the turns is discussing pizza the style of pizza that they prefer and then of course everybody gives their own input and then danny lets them know why they're wrong it, right pretty much because because danny is a pizza connoisseur he is the king of pizza, he is the guy that if you want to know, based on the time of year, even the time of day that you want to have a slice of pizza, he will tell you the perfect pairing of crust style, sauce, red sauce, white sauce, maybe a blend. What type of cheese should go on that pizza? The toppings, do you want to go lighter with maybe spinach and chicken, or do you want to go for the full all meats, you know, five pound slices, and he's good at it. He's yeah. very that. That should almost be dessert a third pizzas. hustle. Dessert pizzas, yes. That should almost be a third side hustle for him. Man, this is guy's being juggling a, a pizza so much. Coach. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah, a coach. Yeah. A well, pizza coach. Right. Because, I mean, there are times when I want pizza and I'm like, do I go New York style? Do I go Chicago deep dish style? What do I get on it? And I bet Danny could say, well, Julia, because you have just worked, you know, a full shift at your job, you've driven 45 minutes home, and you're currently drinking a Christmas ale, you should really go for a slice of pizza that will fit, you know, that, that will, will complement the palate that you're currently experiencing and go with the type of day you're having. Yeah, that might have legs, you know, for as many different apps that are out there and for as much self-help as you know, people are doing for themselves or, or trying to diagnose, you know, self-diagnose right. through, you know, listening to somebody's comments on Facebook about things that they're totally not qualified <laughs> to talk about. Danny's, what you're talking about. Danny's qualified to yes. talk about this. And so 100%. if he had his own, you know, Danny H's uh, self-help pizza app, you could just... I, you know, I'd pay a buck 99 for it. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Yeah. And if you get enough people to pay a buck 99 for it, Tens of bucks. Tens of bucks. Tens of bucks. Tens of bucks. <laughs> so <laughs> we, had, we had a dollar for every download. Uh, we but would any, have. Yes. Well, we would actually be doing all right. We'd be doing okay. Be do, we, could, we could buy new mics. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. Yeah, we could, we could do that. How do people support the show, Julia? <laughs> they can support the show by either bringing us beer to BC's Bottle Lodge Montgomery and letting them know that it is for the shift beer team. Or you can buy us a pint at an incredibly difficult website that I need to figure out how to redo, but I'll put it in the show notes. You said shift beer team. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> that was awesome. You see, you can support your beer and consequence <laughs> by bringing beer for shift beers. <laughs> hey, shift beers, when are you going to bring hey, us some beers. beer? Or you're welcome if that's they, right. If someone brings beers for shift no, please beers, do. Then please do. That'll please be do. Am- and tell us about it because that's amazing. And I yeah. and I would love to hear about how they got beer because of my complete just brain dissolving we, right we there. We can't get people to bring us beer. But, no, but, but I if bet we, we can get, get people to bring <laughs> them beer. I love it. That's great. That's awesome. So, um, but yeah, the the website is ko fi dot com slash truth beer pod. You can buy us a pint, or it'll buy us a slice of pizza that Danny Harold recommends. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we could please do that. Let's see, uh, what else stuck out about the first uh, episode? Oh, so something cool that they revealed on the first part of the podcast is that Tim. Has I mean just you know many different facets to him, uh, but one of the things that Tim can do is he can give you a fresh fade. They the freshest of fades. Freshest of fades, and they talked about how Danny, uh, how Tim was going to bring his equipment. He has equipment, like an actual hair cutting kit. Like yes, yes, and he was going to bring it and you know get give Justin his uh, his fresh do his fresh oh, fade. He was going to manscape Justin. So they're going to put one of the in. When the weather's nice out in the beer garden, mm-hmm. he's going to be available on certain days uh, to be able to give fresh, fresh fades. Now, you will have to schedule an appointment with him because he understands that the demand is going to be incredibly high, so it can't just be walk-ups. But, yeah, keep an eye out on Sonder's social media page for when Tim will be available to give you the freshest fade while you drink the freshest of Sonder beers. So great. I mean, they're just thinking of everything over there. They really are. And I love how they encourage the side hustles. I mean, Justin was all cut my hair right now, trim up my beard right now on the show while we're doing this. Mm-hmm. That, that was that was part of the conversation, too. I mean, how one thing led to another about, hey, if you weren't in the beer business, what you mm-hmm. would, what would you be doing? Mm-hmm. Uh, Justin would probably own like a sneaker boutique. Yes. Uh, Danny's got all of his side hustles that he could just lean more into. Mm-hmm. I think he would be more full-time wedding attendee, or would he own a, like a whole franchise of pizza restaurants? Like, which one would be his main job, and which would be the side hustle? I don't know if he'd own pizza restaurants, but I, I think the the app with the pizza self-help mm-hmm. has legs. True. And then yeah. Yeah. Uh, the wedding thing, man, it's a seasonal business. I mean, That's when you're true. when it's season, you got to be all in. That's very true. Very true. Makes a ton of sense. And then Austin uh, has. A degree in I don't know what, what was he in in um, he was doing stuff for Davy like working with trees and stuff like that. An arborist. I don't know. We'll go with it. Sure, arborist. Yeah, yeah. Austin the arborist. See, florist. Maybe he could be a florist. Ooh, that'd be cool. Because yeah. then he could help out Danny, give him his ah uh, the boutonnieres. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is They're it not corsage. I think you're right. I don't think it's corsages for guys. I think corsages, corsages are for the for women. Like women, and then. Or whatever. Whatever. Who cares? Whatever you want. If right. you want a corsage, get a corsage. Right. You want a boutonniere, get a boutonniere. I mean, it doesn't it's, matter. It's, there's no judgment. No, none whatsoever. You can buy what I you mean, want. I all, mean, all a corsage is is an inflated boutonniere. It, I mean, it's just bigger. That's all it is. Mm, okay. Yeah, I don't know. So moving on to section two, or rather, well, group two. Oh, my bad. Well, let me not uh, assume you are bit, done. There was a little bit of a surprise, I think. There was a little bit of a. Uh, I wasn't expecting that in uh, towards the end of the first episode. So this one's for JP here. <clears throat> I've heard people say that too much of anything is not good for you, baby. But I don't know about that. There's many times that we've loved, we've shared love and made love. It doesn't seem to make like it's enough. There's just not enough of it. There's just not enough. Oh, oh, babe. Oh, man. That was smooth. Thank you. And now everyone, everyone <laughs> here at BC's is pregnant. <laughs> 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 that was amazing. I love it. Your your impressions know no bounds. Okay. And you have no shame no, when no. it comes to them either. No, no. Cause, and we have no audience. So, I mean. Well, there's 10, 10 minus 5. Uh, people here, so coming no, we, us. Yeah. I think actually, I think as the, as the weather uh, keeps turning and changing, I think we're uh, we're going to get a little bit of an audience, a little bit of a studio audience. 
Uh, so yeah, moving on to the second half of that. It was, it was about what an hour twenty two, maybe the full, the full episode as it comes out. Yeah. But it's it's section two, mm-hmm. so it's not not that. It was about like 35, 37 minutes into the episode that they switched over to group yeah. number two, uh, Helena, Wayne, and Luke, who has not been on the show for for quite a while. Yeah, he's it's been, been a, a very busy guy. Yeah, yeah. Which I mean, good for him that he's busy enough that. He doesn't have time to be on the show, but at the same time, yeah, Luke's like kind of miss. Uh, uh, I ain't got time for that, bro. Nah, definitely not. No, he. I'm sure he'd love to be on the show more often. You know, hey, duty calls. And I think what it is has less to do about beer and more to do about you know his family life. Sure, absolutely. And and we 100% say family first. So yeah. So going back to to group number two for Sonder Stories, Chapter 81, Third Anniversary, Part Three. Luke actually uh, was able to reveal some of the barrels that that he's excited about. They didn't go into what types of beers are in these barrels, but he mentioned a few of the barrels themselves that Sonder is working with. Um, some of these may work out, some of these may not. We might see beers coming out of these. We we might not. It just all depends on how how everything goes. But they're uh, in in their I don't want to say warehouse, but in their the facility. Barrel facility, correct. Uh, they do have a 23-year-old 23, 23 Pappy Van Winkle barrel that they're that they're working with, as well as a Willet Apple bra- Apple Brandy barrel, which sounds amazing. No matter, I don't care what you put in it, I'll drink it. And also some Buffalo Trace barrels as well. Sounds really exciting. It does. So Helena had some. Absolutely amazing stories that she shared with with the team. Uh, some of them, a few of the people that were on that were in their group knew about. Some of it, no one knew. Apparently, her favorite part of her job because she she works mainly in, in the lab and for, mm-hmm. for quality, but she also gets to go to the different other parts of the business. Um, you know, packaging, manufacturing, that type of thing. She found an absolute love for snapping pack text yeah. onto four and six packs. Yeah, that's yeah. that's that's her thing, right? So when they go to do the canning run, mm-hmm. Helena's like, ah, "I'm in. This I'm is me. In. Right I here. This is my tribute. spot. I'm putting the pack text on. Well, popping what I, them." What I thought was interesting is she uses that as kind of an anxiety coping mechanism, and that is a very satisfying sound as they snap onto the cans. Mm-hmm. I can understand. At first, I was like, oh, that's kind of odd. But then as I thought about it, there is nothing better. Now, taking them off the cans can be annoying, depending on how, like, rigid the pack techs are. Right. But pushing them down and just hearing that, like, that cascading click. Right. Oh, beautiful. I I see 100% where she's coming from with that. I think that definitely for some people who like repetitive tasks and trying to be you know, very focused on those repetitive tasks. I could definitely see where something like that would be enjoyable, oh, yeah. especially when it's not only is it part of your job, but it's a part of your job to where it's not your entire job. Right. And you know, so she, like we said, she works in the lab. And so that is a portion of her job. And it's good to be able to find things that in each phase that you perform as far as a, a, a work task that you find something that you like to do. Yeah. Well, and I think it's also important too that, no matter where you are in a company, trying to understand as much as you can about the jobs and tasks that are done both before it gets to you and after it gets to you helps you understand where you fit into the entire process better. Well, it's important. It's important to make sure that they're on there correctly and make sure mm-hmm. that they pop. Uh, it's important to make sure once you palletize them up, you know, that they that that they're in there that 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 form. The biggest reason why you don't reuse pack text is because those tabs can can crack bend, off or, yeah, or yeah, can bend, bend or, or you don't you don't get that nice secure yeah attachment. It's not really a seal, but it's right, a, yeah. Attachment. So you know it's 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 not a uh, an unimportant task. It's, a, it's an extremely True. important task, and I know, I would imagine that after that you snap that pack tech on there that that you manually have to go and take that and stack it on a pallet mm-hmm. right at least mm-hmm. we didn't we had to is we didn't have automation yeah. of any sort yeah uh so you know there's there's some labor in there too so yeah yeah only other thing that i really had written down about uh about this section of of the podcast was i feel helena's pain when it comes to eating spicy things and almost dying that story was fantastic it and was. it was terrible and fantastic all at the same time right yes. and so it's 
it's not exactly like watching somebody fall and slip on ice, but it's of, and it's not exactly like watching a train wreck. But or like falling in the snow and dropping an entire thirty rack of rolling rock. Well, somebody did that. Yes. Somebody did somebody that. Did that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Did somebody else slip and fall? Yeah, yeah. There was in in the process of trying to recover said spilled rolling rock. Someone else ate it as well. Ah, okay. Yeah. Maybe talk about that later. We, we might talk. Or about Or we later. might just not. We, I mean, it depends. And let you guys figure out. Where in the episode <laughs> does this fit in? So, if you know, you know. So, uh, Joella's chicken, yes. right? Yes. Yes. I've never had it. I have. It's good. Yeah. I, it is. It's good. Well, I guess it's a thing since it's not that far from Sonder, where every now and then, they're like, we're getting some Joella's chicken. Mm-hmm. Helena was all in, like, hell yeah, Joella's chicken. Yep. She was all in until that first bite, and then she went, "I have made a terrible mistake." That's right. Yes, and, and I'm sure that just from, from this lead, and you can figure out what happened, I did something similarly dumb, but but I 100% knew what I was going into. Uh, so just the other night, my boyfriend and I have this thing about trying really hot, hot sauces. I can't breathe. My nose is running. My, my eyes are, you know, watering. I'm sweating. It is awful. And then I do it again. It's just so. It is look, the dumbest you guys thing. Do your, you guys do your thing. It's not anything I want to be a part of uh, <laughs> as far as trying out all these craziest hot sauces. Josh did say that we should try to do an episode or a segment. We take some hot sauce and then try to do a segment. I uh, went, no. Okay. Uh, maybe. No, maybe. Maybe. maybe yes, maybe no. <laughs> just imagine Josh. Like, <laughs> you know, you're doing whatever, <laughs> editing a podcast, and Josh comes over like, hey, look what I got. He's got two bottles. Two of bottles of hot sauce. Hot yeah. sauce, and you're like, yeah. oh god damn it! Both from the heatness, the last damn triple X and uh, constrictor. Right. Holy shit! So, so this is the dumb thing that I did not to kind of step over, you know, Sonder stories and and Helena's a horrible, horrible, tragic afternoon. But yeah, so so the other night, Josh gets out the bottle of the last damn triple X that we've had in the fridge for a while, and he was like just kind of shakes the bottle at me. I grab the bottle. He's like, no, 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 we don't have to do this. And I'm like, nope, I grab the bottle. That means it's on. <laughs> so we each take, you know, a little bit. And and my hot, my, my like heat tolerance isn't the best, but I'm not a smart person. I'm like, okay, fine. I touched the bottle. I've committed. I'm going to do this. So get, you know, a little bit of, of last dab. Go ahead and, and, and eat it. Put on my tongue, whatever. Instant regret. I mean, it is one of those. It's almost instant heat. <laughs> so I'm, you know, open mouth breathing and trying to, like, find ways to breathe at where it doesn't hurt and where, you know, I'm, I'm okay. And as it's slowly, and, and to me, it's, I call it the seven-minute burn because Josh is like, oh, here, you know, drink some of your beer, drink some of whatever. And, I'm, and again, being the idiot I am, nope, nope. I'm, I'm going to wait until it fades on its own. I can't taste anything anyway right now. I'm not going to waste a couple drinks of beer when I can't enjoy it. The heat hasn't even begun to fade. And I look over, he's at the fridge again, and he's shaking a bottle of Constrictor at me. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> and he just starts laughing. I grab the ball. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. We do not have to do this. Oh, but you know he wanted to but do it. But you know he wanted to do it, and he wanted me to do it. Yes. So the last dab is an instant, I mean, instantly. The you, last dab. Yeah, last dab triple X. You are instantly on fire. <laughs> Constrictor God. is a slow build, but once it once that build peaks, holy shit, you know it. And it, it hits peak within like 30 seconds. So again, take, you know, a little bit. I still can't really breathe, taste anything. So I'm like, it cannot get much worse than this. Put a little bit on my tongue. It got worse than that. Oh my God. I'm like, because, you know, Josh is like, yeah, well, you know, just wait for that heat to build. And I'm like, it's been like a minute. It hasn't. Oh God, there it goes. So uh, it was... Take a take, take myself and the listeners through. So, <laughs> is this is this one shelf? Is this a whole cabinet? Do you have it, these hot sauces on display? No, we, where... keep, we keep it in the fridge, just on one of the one of the door shelves, and we just okay. have like six or seven bottles. We still have. Um, we've used a, a decent amount, but we still have a bunch of the hot sauce for mortals. Hot, hot sauce, sauce for mortals. That, yeah. uh, that Matt Damaris from the Hustle and Bruce podcast had talked about. Um, that stuff is, is delicious. And of course, Josh gets some of that because we were cooking dinner at the time. It's not like this was just, you know, we're not doing anything. Let's cause each other pain. I, I um, thought that's kind of we how were, it happened. And I'll do it again. I'm not a smart person. Was was it, 
as far as hot sauce and whatnot, I, the, that's your thing. Do it. Was this the episode where Justin took us through this very strange encounter at a chicken wing place where he wanted the hot like level four? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah he walked into. So and Justin that, yeah, tells a yeah. story, and I'm not going to give I'm not going to give the story away because I want you to go and listen to the podcast. But from a experience mm -hmm. standpoint. He walked into an establishment, and right from that part where he walked into the establishment, things sort of went sideways. Yes, it really, really did. Really weird. It but was Justin a, made the most of it. Yeah, and I think that he 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 did. And I think for those of you who have never met Justin, I have had the privilege of meeting Justin and talking with Justin several times. He's just a good dude, man. Yeah. And that comes across. And I think you get that from episode one of mm -hmm. Sonder Stories all the way up until, until this this sort of unusual interaction. Yes. So he's just a good dude. Um, yeah. And he'll make the best of things, right? Yeah. Yeah, check out this episode of Sonder Stories. Hear more from more of their crew about the excitement building up to their third anniversary. Find out who knows what a hummingbird cake really is. Yeah, I still don't get it. I don't get it. I mean, I've it's, been told through these podcasts what it is, and I still don't get it. Well, before we move on to shift beers, um, looks like our both of our glasses are getting a little bit on the low side, so let's take a real quick break, refill, and get ready for shift beers. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back once again. I am Julia, and I am drinking for my second. I don't know why I reintroduced myself. It, it's fine. I've had I've had a beer. A is that just <laughs> a? It's, it's just fine. a beer. So my my second beer of the night is from Grainworks. It is their double oatmeal stout, and it is called Breck or Brewers Breakfast. Okay. And it is really really good. And Marco, you have a full glass as well. What uh, what are you partaking in for part two? of our podcast pseudo sue from toppling goliath excellent that was one of the first beers i had at the first bottle share that i went to i don't know i like dinosaurs cool. i never grew up uh, I, I had one of those inflatable t-rex costumes for a uh function i guess i'll call it uh where my wife and i had those inflatable t-rex costumes on for yep. and we had to take a picture and then it was for a function. Josh got me one of those for Christmas one year. Oh, really? Yeah. That's yeah, great. And I, and I wore it for Halloween and, you know, handed up candy wearing it and was dancing around and it was great. It was fun. We need to do a podcast with both of us wearing <laughs> inflatable dinosaur. I don't know how that would work as far as sound quality. I don't know either. But it is definitely I borrowed the costume. I'm sure I could Did borrow you? it again. Yeah. But. Yeah. Or just fun get my times. own. Maybe someone will get me one for Christmas. Maybe hey. one of the listeners will drop one off for me hey. here at PC's Biologic Montgomery. You never know. If you have an inflatable anything costume, yeah, except for a dick, don't don't do that. Wow. We will wear right it while we record a show. Sure. We'll at least try to figure out how to record it. Sure. Because, like I said, yeah. you have the little plastic window for your face. Yeah. But there's no actual ventilation holes to breathe through that we could talk through, so it might be a little muffled. Might be weird, yeah. It might be a little muffled. And might then, be weird. Might be fun. Might be. It'll might be, be fun, me. And I, these mics would probably, probably be better than say, lapel mics because lapel mics would need to go inside, and then they, they have that fan right. blowing the whole time. <laughs> so. Good time. So Marco and I have both worn inflatable T-Rex costumes. How about that? Yet another thing to add to the <laughs> holy crap. Holy crap. We are more alike than we wear an inflatable we <laughs> on our birthday. Yeah. You can wear an inflatable costume. Do. Okay, so I'm looking up. If, if our birthday is on a Tuesday in 2022, that is going to be. I don't think it's a Tuesday. I don't, it's probably not, but I'm hoping. It is not. Our birthday is on a Thursday this year. Ah, uh, okay. Close enough. We it's only close. Have to, we only have to keep doing this podcast for four or five more years to do a podcast on our birthday. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That'll be a milestone. <laughs> we Hey, aim high. Yeah, for sure. Aim high. The, the second and final podcast that we have to recap tonight is everyone's favorite. Shift beers. Shift beers. Episode 60, where they talked about Christmas beers. They did. They did talk about and drink Christmas beers after the 33 and a half minutes of drinking. Yes. Yes. It was, it was, as always, a very long drinking. 
but the the drinking section was full of a lot of little mini stories. Yeah. That we will that we will let you know about. One of the most important things to know about this episode, Beth, Beth is, is back. back. And I love that without even looking at each other, because I have written down, we didn't have Brian, but Beth is back, and we both went for Beth first. She is the adult that holds that show together. Yeah, and yeah. she really, there's a, a lot missing when Beth is not there. It's true. It's true. She's she the most true. aggressive burper as well. She really is. I mean, she, she brings it. She brought it this episode, which we'll get into later on in this recap when we do our burp count. Yep. Yeah. So the shift beer that they had was Urban Artifacts Teak. Um, I had that at Higher Gravity a couple, well, a week or two ago. It's, it's pretty good. I'm not the biggest fan of guava, but it was still a, a decent beer. A lot of pineapple, a lot of orange in it. So it was it was very good. It did go down easy, as as they were saying, I thought, especially for, for an Urban Artifact beer. Yeah, I can't drink those Urban Artifact beers. I respect the, completely what they do. Sure. And the small sips and things that I've had of their beer have been fantastic. I just, mm-hmm. I can't do it. I can drink one, but I can't do multiple. And this is for any sour. This isn't just Urban Artifacts specifically, but I can't do multiple full glasses, full cans in one sitting. Um, I can, like you, I can have, you know, a couple sips of a couple different kinds, but man, they just don't sit the way they used to with me. Yeah, they never sit. Teak's good. That, yeah. Doesn't really yeah. sit there. Yeah. They keep that, you running. Good. It's not good. Gravy legs. Not good. Not good. No. All right. Well, we will move on from that then. <clears throat> good idea. So Josh was having an incredibly bad Alzheimer's night, mm-hmm. especially at the beginning. I felt like he got better as the episode went on, but the beginning of the episode... It was weird. He was it, unaware of what was happening. It, I didn't know how many beers he had prior to hitting the record button, but... I don't know. It was weird, too. And then you'd think they'd be used to Brian not being there, but uh, when Brian wasn't there, like, uh, who's going to go first for drinking? Right. Like, right. Let's go, bud. Yeah. Let's go. One of Beth's drinkings, because we need to make sure that we highlight everything Beth from this episode, sure. because she was we missing should. from last week. Yep. She was at a wedding... And she got a vintage. Oh, it's vintage. Vintage oh, psychopathy. My God. In the wild. So, I mean, I'm kind of, I don't know if it was poured. I, well, I guess she got the can because she was able to read the, the can date on uh-huh. it. She should have saved it for a vertical. I know she does the um, the 10 uh verticals, yep. or her and Corey are doing that. This would have been the perfect opportunity to try to incorporate psychopathy into a vertical. Verticals, yeah. Yeah. Vertical yeah. psychopathy. It was definitely an experience for her. And then somehow they transitioned into Dungeons and Dragons, mm-hmm. and someone mentioned doing a Shift Beers Dungeons and Dragons podcast, which I said, I am 100% in. That would be amazing. It would be Beth being the, the GM screaming at Brian, Chris, and Josh to, to, to fucking take this seriously and play right. But when I brought this up to Marco, he said... I'm out. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Out. He's on a fan. I mean, so. I want I want everyone to have fun doing everything that they do and they enjoy doing, which comes up later in the podcast mm-hmm. yeah. uh, in yeah. a different form. Uh, <laughs> Very different. Form. <laughs> wait, just I can't oh, wait to get there. Just wait. Oh, just but anyways, uh, yeah, not my jam. Not yeah. not my thing. Which is fine. So what they should do is maybe do it as either a Patreon episode or as if they want everyone to hear it, release it as an extra episode during the week, so that the people that want to listen to just. Shift beers as shift beers was intended to be listened to. Here's the thing. Yeah, go didn't, didn't I get have it. To do it. Yeah, I yeah. get it. But if it's they fine. released it, I'd have to listen. You would, because I'd be because like, we'd unless, have to talk about it well, the following week. Unless they do it as a Patreon episode, and uh, then we yes. don't, because we may we might mention it, but we don't want to uh, spoil yes. Patreon content. Correct. Because we definitely want you guys to support Shift Beers. I mean, hell, I said earlier when we first started recording bring to bring beers. For <laughs> How do people beer. find us? How do people support <laughs> us, Julia? <laughs> so you see, what what happens is. They bring beers to BC's Bottle Lodge Montgomery, say that they're for shift beers, and then shift beers on their show shout us out. Right. And you see it's this whole cyclical mess. Love it. That happens. Yeah, great. Good job. Yeah, if you guys want to do a Dungeons & Dragons version of shift beers as like a Patreon episode, something that I am I'm buying in, I will throw extra money at you for that month for it because oh, there I you would go. be... My God, I would love that so much. Oh, I'd love that oh, so much. Wow. So, so Beth, if, if you have not listened to the Adventure Zone podcast, by the way, 
you should definitely check that one out. It's a family that has never played Dungeons and Dragons, trying to play Dungeons and Dragons, and it is, it is brilliant. Absolutely. Oh my goodness! So, but yeah, back to back to the beers. They talked about how, as part of their drinking, there was a lot of drinking happening, including Brian. Chris and Josh going to Beers, Booze, and Bongs, which mm-hmm. we, we saw them at. We did. Chris has a story about what happened at the <laughs> Listerman table, and <laughs> I blush when I try to recall it. So, Marco, I am leaving this up to you for how deeply you want to go into this one. It was... <laughs> it, <laughs> I, <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's doing it. So they went to the Listerman table, right? It was the Lister, Listerman table, right? I guess we'll start with all of the tables, all the breweries. The people that were that were pouring your beers for you at Beer, Booze, and Bonks were members of the, the Pink Ribbon Girls yeah. Society to support awareness of and, and supporting, you know, breast cancer awareness and all of that. That's who Chris was talking to. So, Marco, so I he was talking to the gentleman there. Yes, uh, a, that was a, a, a big gentleman, a big gentleman uh, volunteer, and he's and he said, uh, "Oh, we're not we're not stamping your card. We are uh, we're just taking donations, mm-hmm. you know, for the cause." Right, which and, they got me with, but that was for a bigger pour. They had just brought <laughs> over some of the like the eight ounce plastic cups from the water station, and I'm like, "How do I get one of those full of of this beer?" And he was like, "Donate." <laughs> Chris got a much better deal. Yeah, out. well, Chris, I mean, he's he's not Chris a new guy. No. Chris, he's not a new guy. So Chris is like, oh, dude, sorry, man. I didn't, I'm sorry, bro. I didn't bring cash. He's like, oh, well, we take Venmo. Venmo. He's like, oh, damn. Yeah. Chris got owned on that. Oh, one. damn. And he's like, if you send us 20, I'll show you mine. And he's and Chris is like, you're, you'll show me your what? And he's like, <laughs> you know, you know what I'll show you. <laughs> And Chris is like, oh, well, hell, I got to send, your, I gotta send 20 now. This is where you should White. I'm just saying that this is where the story <laughs> should be told in, like, the Barry White voice. <laughs> so he sends him 20. <laughs> he sends him 20 through, through Venmo. And it, let's put it this way. It's as if you were walking down Bourbon Street during Mardi Gras and Chris was on the balcony with the beads. And then he's, like, flashing the beads. And then the guy gave him the flash. And so, you know, there you go. <laughs> and we were there, and we had no idea that, no, that, that this no guy was giving that free that looks. I mean, <laughs> to, uh, although, uh, to be honest, if that's what, so if you went up and when you're like, hey, so, you know, you're not going to take a punch card, you know, what do I, you know, donate, whatever. If he would have said, hey, for an extra $5 donation, an extra $10 donation, I'll show you my titties. Would you have donated, or would you have just walked away like, I don't need to try this beer that bad? No, no, I mean, it's not a beer I need to try bad enough to see that see guy. Old man. <laughs> sure. But, but hey, as they said brilliantly on shit beers, titty's gonna tit, <laughs> and it was. I can't believe. So I, I, I can't believe I was there and we were walking around with him. Yeah. How did we get so lucky to miss that? No kidding. Good Lord. No kidding. Man. And, I, and, I, and I mean, I hope that the Pink Ribbon Girls raised a ton of money. I hope that they raised a good <laughs> amount of money. But my God. <laughs> Chris had to bleach his. I mean, well, I, well no, as, as they went into, some people like certain things. So yeah, this might have been Chris's, Chris's <laughs> thing. It, they, did, they did very quickly <laughs> go down. And I say oh, quickly, but, yeah. the, you know, so after, the, well, anyways, to drink in and all this, <laughs> say quickly go down a rabbit hole. Yeah. <laughs> they, which, for whatever reason, he just had to, he just had to volunteer that. One one day, his wife was out somewhere. No, uh, she was trying to sell like a purse on Facebook or a purse on something. So it was all, it was all over the internet, which makes it even both creepier and better and more awful all at the same time. I don't even know. Like they wanted they wanted pictures of the stuff in the purse or something. So or they, could, they were trying to buy the purse with all of the stuff in it because they're like their kink, their thing is like people's belongings. With with people. The, right, so so they went down this amazing conversation uh, of, is that like kind of a, a power thing of I have something that includes like a snippet of someone's life or because I, I want you guys to listen to the episode. It is absolutely amazing. But yeah, so Chris's poor wife when. Well, well, 
Here comes a shit just, fetish. Oh my god. No, no, no. <laughs> No, we are not. <laughs> they, they, that is not that is what be a they thing. said. It, it is what they said, but it is not going to be a thing. I will refuse <laughs> to cover this podcast if that's what it turns into. I could not. <laughs> it's just. <laughs> it's oh, God. <laughs> what I mean, as long as you're not hurting anyone, as long as everything's consensual, whatever, 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 whatever. I don't need to know about right. it. I don't need to know about it. <laughs> I just... Jeez. Okay, so, so Mark is maybe the rest of this here. maybe the rest of this needs to be an inside joke where you have to go you and have listen to, listen to, it, to yeah. figure out what the hell we're cracking up about, or at least me. I really, yeah, no, I, I think <laughs> I think that that's what it should be because the the purpose of this show isn't for us to tell you all about the episode so that you don't have to listen to it. It's to <laughs> Mark is dying over here. It is to make you curious enough about did that really happen or wait a minute, what are they talking about to where you now. <laughs> go i need to listen to shift beers i need to listen to this episode and hopefully that you know keeps well, you i'm glad beth was back for this part oh of that, my this God. episode because her her expertise in this scenario was her, invaluable i ripped to her dms that's all i'm saying <laughs> hey but by, by, by the way beth if you want to send me some pictures of uh <laughs> I almost spit all over this microphone. That's why I stopped. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah, so um yeah, we'll we'll kind of leave it at that, but but that was a whole ungodly rabbit hole that they went down that I'm at work listening to this and I am trying <laughs> Because, you know, if someone sees you laughing about something, you're listening, oh, what are you listening to? And then you have to, then I'm like, how do I explain that I'm listening to, to a guy talk about how he tipped, air quotes, another guy to show him his titties? Like, how do I, how do I do that? On a craft beer podcast. On a craft beer podcast. And it's like, how do I explain that and have them not look at me like I have three heads going, what the fuck is wrong with you? What are you listening to at work? We need to have a conversation with HR. I don't. No, no wonder they don't mention the place they don't they don't work. No, at. <laughs> no, I no. It's yes, it is very understood. Mar <laughs> Marco literally has tears in his eyes it's, right now. So for it's once, so it's funny. It's him losing his shit and not me. It's so funny, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> okay, okay. But, but so ser but seriously, Beth, if you want to hit me up sometime. I'll... And then, and then they drank at to the point where they drank beer. Yes, yes. That they they got into their their <laughs> holiday beers, which they had Braxton's Jubilee, Great Lakes Christmas Ale, which is the king of the Christmas ales, Saunders Kenosha Kickers, Fifty West Home Sweet Home, and one that that Josh brought. That I understand that I believe he brought it because he only sees it around Christmas time. But you let me know what what do you think is Shock Tops Twisted pretzel wheat ale would you would you ever think of that in the vein of a specific holiday or seasonal type of beer yeah it's excellent uh excellent questions it really is it's an important conversation i'm glad we're having it what i would say is that if you try and enter that beer into a bjcp certified contest i don't know how well it would do uh for christmas style uh, on the same hand, what I would say is going back to a little bit of the conversation we were having last week, which is uh, special specialty beers versus special, special beers, right? Yeah. And and Josh said this is a thing I've only seen around Christmas time. So to me, this is a Christmas beer. It's a special that's, beer, yeah. and so yeah. to me, that's enough sure. for him. I, I it's, agree. It's I that's agree. his truth, and it's a Christmas beer to him. So that's fine. It's just like somebody saying, you know, back in twenty seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, if you would watch all the Stella Artois commercials oh, and be uh, uh, prompted to pick up a six pack or a you know, uh, whatever of a Stella. A chalice of Stella Artois. I have a Stella Artois. Yep. Okay. Art Artois nope. chalice. I have one. No judgment. And uh, totally judging you right now. That's fine. Just, just so you know. That's fine. I have the class. That's fine. <laughs> and and prompted to have that beer around Christmas time. Well, to you, that's Christmas beer. To yeah. Stella, yeah. they pump that beer out all year long. I yeah. mean, 
I can't say I've ever had the shock top pretzel wheat. I have not. The first time I saw it was this year, but mm. I mean, maybe I just wasn't really paying attention last year. Well, if you find so it, pick it up. It, Let's have it. Yeah, I was just going to say, if I if I see it, um, I'll definitely pick it up. We'll bring it here. We'll definitely chug it down, see what we think. We probably won't find any other beer that Josh said he mixed it with at an event at Union Terminal, I believe it was. Yeah, I believe that, he that said... sounded really good. A beer event at Union Terminal. It was a... Was it a... It was a cherry raspberry? Star, or raspberry. A raspberry, raspberry stout from Goose Island? I think so. It was from the Heidelberg uh, distributor, which they are literally, like, a, not even 10 feet away from Union Terminal. They're one of their main warehouses. It sounded delicious, which made me go, if I see, you know, the, the pretzel shock top, I might pick it up to try it. I mean, I'm I'm down to try it. Is it a Christmas beer or not? Well, that's, that's your up to that's you. that's up yeah. to you. you it's know. it's kind of like how some people only drink dark beers during the winter. I mean, those could be seasonal beers to them, whereas for other people, it's it's year round. It is all up to you. So if Josh feels that it is a Christmas beer, a holiday beer, I'm behind it. And not only that, it's their show. I mean, come on now. Yeah. I mean, you get to you get to Hell make yeah. up your own rules. That was that was interesting. What what, was, what else were they the, drinking? Those were the only holiday beers that they had, but their bonus beers were Hubbard's Caves Ice Mocha Imperial Stout, which sounded really good, and the Long Drink Zero Carb Zero Sugar Drink. It was apparently amazing. It makes me want to go to my local Kroger and find it and buy some. So we'll we'll have to see. Maybe I'll bring some next episode. For great, us yeah. To, if you if you have some, if you find some, some, if you and, buy some, that'd be great. Is I it personally as good as they say it is. I personally would like to have uh, somebody else uh, <laughs> drop it off for us. <laughs> yeah. You know. So um. So if anyone would like to support our show, we would love to try <clears throat> the the zero carb zero sugar long drink. Drop off just a can. We'll split a can. We're not asking for you to bring like an entire case of it. No, to don't us. do that. We just we want to try it. <laughs> just, That's it. <laughs> just one. We just want to try it. That's all. They also had a good discussion about uh, the correct pronunciation of foaling. Because it, it, and this is something that I have said from day one. I know. F o w l i n g, foul, ing. I understand 100% bowl with football foal. But if you can say F O W L I N G as foaling, can you pronounce B O W L I N G as bowling? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yep. Bowling. Doesn't sound very like something I'd want to do. I mean, something that everyone does at least once a day. But send all like... of your comments to at uh, <laughs> shift beers hashtag bowling. bowling. <laughs> All right, and now on. Did you really? Did you have anything else on shift beers? It was a. It was an incredibly hilarious episode. It was it hilarious. If you haven't listened to any of the previous episodes that we we have recapped, please listen to this one. It is. It is amazing in the most ridiculous way possible. That's the best way that I can say. Yeah, I mean, it's just a good. What is it? Hour twelve. Hour. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was a. It was just a it, good chunk of time to just chill and and. Uh, Listen to sophomore behavior. And if you and if you need more shift beers and you want to hear what they sound like after they stop recording, play it at negative point <laughs> five speed. <laughs> oh my god. Shift beers is an episode or not an episode, but a show that slower is almost better. So if you have the time Listen to it at uh, at negative point five. Uh, <laughs> Give it a go. It's, it's <laughs> at, at least not even the whole episode. Put it, slow it down. Just skip through to a couple parts. It's great. And, uh, yeah, let's move on to as I have written down. Twinkle, twinkle, little burp. Okay, Marco, would you like to explain what the burp count game is for uh, for all of our listeners? Yep, I would love to. So shift beers. We decided that a long time ago, and we're on what episode seventeen. This is episode 18. 18. So we decided... We're adults. Uh, oh, wow. Oh, shit. We probably need an adult. Oh, man. We, we have hit the adulthood of wow. our podcast. That's wow. pretty cool. Wow. Wow. We decided that uh, Shift Beer is a perfect show to play a drinking game or, or have a drinking game centered around. So what we did was we took how many times they have an audible burp and count it 
and that's when you have a drink. Now, the average drink of any liquid is about two ounces. Mm -hmm. So we do the math for you. What we do is we let you know uh, how many burps and count up the two ounces per and give you what, in the end, you would have consumed if you played the drinking game, <clears throat> ship beers, burp drinking game, uh, to its completion. And Julia? Yes, I have counted up the burps from this week's episode. They thought that they were crushing it yeah. during this episode. But what you pointed out when we were having our, our pre-recording, our pre-production production meeting... Yeah is they would have periods where they would have like some quick hitting, like a couple really good burps, but then the conversation would, would continue and there wouldn't be a lot. And then they would have another couple, you know, quick hitting burps and then another, you know, period without anything. So they didn't do terrible. This was not a low ranking episode by any means, but it was a little lower than their average. And they were down a, a co They were down a person too as well. Right. Yeah. Right. And it wasn't seltzer. It wasn't anything super carbonated that they were drinking. And, right. and I felt like this episode, they were enjoying the beers they were drinking more than just trying to get through a lot of beers. Right. So this episode, they had a grand total of 44 burps, which is 88 ounces. Okay. Which is a very respectable 5.5 pints if okay. they were drinking along during during the episode. All right. So that that worked. I mean, okay. that's, that's that's good. good. I mean, that'll get you there. It really will. I mean, in an hour and twelve or twenty-two minutes, whatever the oh, show yeah. is. Oh yeah. Five beers there. You're still slamming those down. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's good. That's I mean, pretty awesome. Like so good job, guys. I mean, yeah. as as always, we know that the the effort was there, and we appreciate the effort so much more than the actual number of burps that you're able to get out. Speaking of appreciation, I know uh, Shift Beers in the show uh, shouted out their appreciation to everybody that listens and supports the show. Mm -hmm. Uh, You're welcome. Very much so. You are very welcome. We do what we can for you and expect nothing but the same in return. Yep. Yeah. So do you have anything else on on Shift Beers? I appreciate the fact that... Uh, they they mentioned in the show, uh, of course, it was thanks, the week of Thanksgiving. Yes, yeah. And so they had just come off to uh, Stout Blowout, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. So it, it was a little bit of a cobble together in the sense of, hey, we can, let's get together this day, which we never get together. Let's do this mm-hmm. on this day. And mm-hmm. you know, I really appreciate the fact that they wanted to put out content the week of Thanksgiving. They certainly could have. Like many other shows did, they could have taken Take the week, week off, and, and but they didn't, and I appreciate it. And they put out a really fantastic episode. Mm-hmm. So, and I think this is going to come up as we go through the next few weeks during the holiday season and review the the podcasts that come up. Everybody that puts something out around this time period, uh, I really appreciate what you're doing, what you're putting out, because certainly there is plenty of other reasons to do anything other than get together and record a podcast. I mean, nobody's getting rich doing this, uh, at least on our scale. Mm -hmm. Uh, So we're doing this out of out of the passion for doing it and the wanting to communicate with the people that like to interact with us or enjoy the product that we're doing. So I truly appreciate it. Uh, Shift beers, Sonder stories. And then, you know, like we said earlier next week, you know, we should be with another gamut of podcasts to yes, go. Yes. So, so what, uh, we only had two podcasts to recap this week, but what I want to do is take kind of a quick break to make sure that we are both fully composed after, okay. after all the, the fetish talk. It's a great idea. Again, Beth, um, if you just want to, want to let me know, but I wanted to, to talk about beer vent. Beer vent is some would argue, not a real season, real holiday, whatever you may, may say, but I wanted to spend just a couple minutes, much like you did last week, and talk about why Beer Vent is so special to me and to to give a shout out to to a couple people, a couple places that that really embody what Beer Vent is and why it it is such a phenomenal season in the craft beer community. So we will be right back with that. <laughs> All right, and we are back once again for the final few minutes of of this week's episode. Marco, you have a fresh glass of a very clear-looking liquid. I know, I know. What'd you you do? What did you do? I have Cranapple Sequel from Sonder, which is a hard seltzer. Nice. And what do you think? 
Uh, the flavor's good. It's, it smells amazing. Yeah, it smells fantastic. Uh, flavor's good. Crane apple. I definitely get it. Um, mm-hmm. Can't be mad at that. No, I'm not. It's not really a go-to kind of thing for me. I just saw it said crane apple. I said, okay, we'll give it a shot. I want one of that. And yeah, I'm still finishing up my amazing double oatmeal stout from grain work so i am good uh, but yeah just wanted to wrap up this week's episode talking about the season that we have just entered which is beer vent and to me i'm going to take a page out of danny harold's book to me beer vent is a feeling it is the 25 days of Chris of, of christmas the 25 days of december if if you're not aware and you pick a beer each day each of the 25 days to enjoy and there are a couple companies out there that are are releasing beer vent calendars or have released beer vent calendars higher gravity being the one that is near and dear to my heart the one that kind of got me into posting more in the cincinnati craft beer club community on facebook they put together an absolutely amazing beer vent box of beers that you can't typically get on a regular basis in the cincinnati area and they've also started to collaborate with local breweries such as Westside, Streetside, Urban Artifact. I think there are a total of eight breweries this year to make a specialty beer that you can only get packaged in the beer vent box. Some of them, depending on how much they brew, you might be able to get at the brewery on draft, but you're not going to be able to find it in packaged form anywhere other than the beer vent box, which I think is a really awesome way to bring Cincinnati craft beer into into this this time of year what makes it special for me and this is a huge huge shout out to kevin graves from the cincinnati craft beer club community he gifted me a beer vent box that he crafted and curated uh, with a couple of his friends from out of town i hope i'm getting that correct it's a whole bunch of out of distro beers beers that i may never get the opportunity to try And he was gracious enough to gift me one because of the beer vent posts that I make in the Cincinnati Craft Beer Club community every December or that I have for the past couple of years. And the reason that he said he wanted to to gift me one of these boxes is because beer vent is supposed to be, to me, everyone can take their own interpretation of it, but a time of year where you're supposed to be excited about the beers that that you're getting to drink every day or that you save up maybe pull out a week's worth of beers and have them all on on a weekend but i love the anticipation the surprise of not knowing what beer you're going to get that day i love being able to pull out a beer that someone has picked for you to drink because they think you'll enjoy it or because it's a beer that they enjoy and they want you to share in their excitement about it Maybe it's a beer you've had before. Maybe it's a style that are not that you're not a huge fan of. It doesn't matter. Take pride in the fact that someone wanted to share that experience, that that special beer, as as you like to say, Marco, with you. They wanted to share that the, the things that they love, the things that they enjoy, the things that make Cincinnati craft beer what it is. They want to share that with you one beer at a time, one beer a day over the 25 days leading up to Christmas. Beer vent is a season. Beer vent is something that I look forward to every year. It makes me excited. I kind of sparkle more getting close to to this season because wanting to see what someone else has been so excited about, has been waiting to share with someone else, is what makes the season so special to me. So if anyone has gotten a beer vent calendar, be it from Wolf's Ridge up in Columbus, be it from Higher Gravity, be it from a friend of theirs who maybe put something together for them, maybe, you know, luckily Party Source didn't do one this year, but hey, you know, we'll, we'll, (laughs) a beer vent calendar is a beer vent calendar, (laughs) good or bad. Um, I believe that Brewdog put put out two this year, one with, um, (laughs) one with their normal stuff and one all non-alcoholic beers. Whatever... Whatever you are doing to participate in beer vent season, maybe it's going to a different brewery every day or simply just enjoying the ungodly random posts that I will be making every day starting in recording time tomorrow. But by the time that this post comes out, it'll be a couple days in that I put out about the beers that I have gotten for beer vent season. 
enjoy your beers, enjoying the excitement when someone shares a beer with you, even if you don't like it, even if it's something that's not your thing. Enjoy the experience and the excitement of someone else wanting to share a beer with you. And have fun with it. Drink together. Raise a glass together. Cheers. It's, it's supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to be serious. As we all know who, uh, who have experienced the higher gravity boxes, one of these days will not be serious. And I almost have more fun with those days where they might ice you or give you a Miller High Life than with anything else you pick out of that beer van calendar. Have fun with it. Enjoy the experience. Enjoy the fun that they want you to have with each beer that they felt you would enjoy. That's all I got to say about that. All right. Marco, I know that you uh, were not able to to snag a beer vent calendar this year, but I mean, with enough restrictions, I completely understand kind of the hesitancy to yeah to paying you know a hundred bucks or more for something that you might only be able to drink a handful of beers from. But if I find something in one of these boxes that is not going to cause you any internal distress, I will save it for our next recording session, and we will share it together because that is the entire point of this season that's awesome. sharing beers that that excite you thank you julia and that's uh, much appreciated and yes that's the reason why i didn't go into any of these beer event calendar boxes you know i would want to have that experience with everybody else you know the community right. the community comes together and in, in online through the facebook pages shares what they have mm-hmm. and comments on what they got and that was pretty cool and you know, that's just one of the things that maybe one of these days I can I can partake in and enjoy it and, and you know, do do that sort of thing. But yeah. I, I enjoy uh, seeing all the interaction about beer vents and I am looking forward to all of the fantastic parodies that you're putting together. And so that's uh, it's awesome. It's exciting. Well, if you like what uh, what we do here at Truth Beer Pod, please like, subscribe, share, follow do all of the things that you're supposed to do to tell other people about the podcast that you enjoy listening to. And also, if you like the the podcast we're recapping, follow them, subscribe to them. If they are not putting out content, we're not putting out content. So be sure to give them as much support as, as you have been gracious enough to give to us. Yeah. Also, special shout out to Craft Parenting Pod. So this episode is their Thanksgiving episode. And this isn't a full review, by the way. Um, but... Go and check out Craft Parenting Pod. This episode is their Thanksgiving episode where uh, they recorded that the week that Caroline uh, recorded with us. <laughs> yes. And that was a fun episode. Oh, very um, fun. And they, blast. they also allude to the fact that in podcast time, in the future, they're going to hang out with us at Beer Booze Bonks. So in podcast time, we've already reviewed that we hung out with them at Beers Booze Bonks. And had a fantastic time as Great well. Great time. Yeah. Great time. And also, it comes up in Shift Beers Podcast, the interaction there as well. Mm-hmm. So shout out to Craft Parenting Pod. Keep doing what you're doing. And, you know, if you're a parent with uh, small children, please do check it out if you're not a parent. But want to get into the life of parents that have small children yes. check it out yes and so thank you for all of the uh interaction podcast to podcast and all the you know shout outs and mentions and uh it was great to hang out with you guys i'm sure that at some point we're going to find a reason to get together again and mm-hmm. that will be a blast so yeah shout out to crap parenting pod yeah. And also Newbert Report. Yes, Newbert Report, you guys are absolutely amazing. If you love craft beer and you love hockey, the Newbert Report is going to be the podcast for you. It is all Canadian craft beer, but my God, it sounds amazing. So if there's ever an opportunity opportunity to get some, you'll already know about the best brews from uh, from the Canadian land. Yeah, and also I just want to say, I mean, this is not this is I'd like for this to be hard stop, final, official. But this is come. This is going to come up every year. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you follow the Newbert Report on social media, they did a post. Die Hard is, in fact, one hundred percent a Christmas movie. It, it has been confirmed. And Joe, the husband of mm-hmm. Caroline, did also speak about that on um, Facebook mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, everybody. I hope you are having a fantastic week. And uh, this week into the future. I am looking forward to listening to all the Crafter podcasts in the Cincinnati area. Julia. Marco. 
what do you plan on doing this upcoming week and what you doing uh, next Tuesday? Uh, I'm going to listen to a whole bunch of Cincinnati craft beer podcasts and I'm going to show up at BC's Bod Lodge Montgomery to have a pint with you while we talk about them. Sounds fantastic. Cheers. Cheers. Have fun, everyone.